Yo, we at the next light. No more Black Tears podcast. You know what I'm saying? Mr. DJ Rose is here. You know what I'm saying? Season C's. What's going on? Yo, what's good, party people? You ready for tomorrow? What's up? What's up? Birthday weekends for, for two two members of the group, man. Yeah, Juice Man. What it do? What it do? We in the building. You know what I'm saying? King Day tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Vertiza, what's going on, man? True, man. Just chilling, man. Sipping on that Uncle Nears, man. Getting ready to celebrate life this weekend. That's what I do, man. So it all happened in the week before it all happens this weekend. So what are we talking about? So this weekend sports, the WNBA Finals actually started and kicked off last night with the Minnesota Lynx and New York Liberty with the Lynx taking game one. So from my understanding, this is the best of five series still. Next season, they move into best of seven. Um, I'm not going to say the playoffs have been exciting for the WBA. I think it's but only it, for the first round. I think. It, yeah. What are your thoughts of this finals? It's actually been pretty good so far. Um, I was wrong. Shit. I admit when I'm wrong. I thought the Aces would have been back in it. Uh, Lynx is a hard team to beat. Um, Liberty, I think Liberty's going to make a comeback and win this series. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a pretty good... NBA is make WNBA is making them steps to make it exciting. They definitely playing their ass off. What team the white girl on? Liberty. It's a lot of white girls. Which one? I'm talking about that one white bitch. Well, unlike that one white bitch, the Liberty got two white bitches. Yeah. So they, got, they got Brianna Stewart, Stewart, Stewart. And, and they got um, Sabrina Esquis or whatever her name is. The one that rookie. Oh, no, she's out. Yeah, she's been out. She got out in the first oh, round. Are you talking about Caitlin Ah, Spy, she bitch. She was out like two, two weeks ago, man. So, so the veterans are in. So, so the veterans are bullying all the chicks. Basically. Okay. Basically. That, that, that's that's um, Vegas, right? No, nah, um, the Liberty put them out. New York put them out. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm betting on the Liberty. I think they're going to win this series. Yeah, man. Um... The playoffs so far for WBA has been so far, to be honest, except for that first round with Caitlin Clark. That got a lot of ratings. Um, that series with the Aces and Liberty should have been promoted more. Like in any other sport, if you had a rematch from the previous championship, imagine how much that would get promoted, especially we all can say, for those who've been watching the WNBA season, A.J. Wilson is the best player in the league. Currently, but yes. for those who've been watching the last couple of years, Brianna Stewart is probably the second or third best player in the league. So when you have that kind of matchup, that should have been promoted a lot more. I will say this, you know, my, my brother TTK been watching it. He actually had the Lynx, I think, winning it all when we talked about it privately. The Lynx have been one of the best teams all year. It sh- we shouldn't be surprised at this matchup. The number one c- team, the number two team facing each other, you know, players like uh, Kali, Ka- 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 I think. Um, she's been great in fantasy if you've had her. And then Courtney Williams, like she's came on during the playoffs. And in the words of um, you know, Rose, sometimes you gotta go with the team that got the more the more the more men. And the Lynx got a lot of men men looking bitches on their team, man. So yeah, I, I they won game one. I think they'll win this series. I think it probably will go five because Brianna Stewart is a great player. And Sabrina, she ain't been scoring like that, you know, in the regular season. But in the playoffs, for some reason, she's turned it up. If she continues to play like she did, because she actually outscored um, Brianna game one, if she plays to that level, they won't be able to – this is going to be a five-game series. So, moving on to the NFL world. Robert Sauer, the head coach for the New York Jets, got fired this week. After only five games, and I want to say at a, what a two and three record, he, he, he's a black man, a white dude. Uh, he's the a, He's a person Lebanese. of color. Yeah, he's a person of color. Oh, damn, I was hoping he was white. Um, what's your? He's thoughts? a person of color, but he looked like Asian. Yeah, he's a Muslim. <laughs> he kind of looks kind of yeah. Bye, cracker. What, what what's your thoughts on um, C's? He's a brown brother. So anytime you got anybody other than a white man leading the he team, white, I'm gonna support him. Let's be honest. No, it's like the Jets. White. It's the Jets. Is anybody fucking surprised? I just hate that they did it halfway through the fucking season. We know the Jets are trash. We know Aaron Rodgers is a shadow of himself. This right. is what happens when you let a QB get his fucking way. Why the fuck is Hackett still there? And why the fuck did you 
hired defensive coordinator under Salah. So Robert Salah is a defense came from a defensive coordinator position. So his history, he's defensive minded. It doesn't translate well with the current team. But let's be honest, when you let a QB run the fucking team, when you let a player run the team, you're never gonna get the results you want. He should have said Robert Salah should have had the final say. And that should have been the end of the discussion. This bullshit is going to come back to bite the Jets in the ass. You do not fire a coach halfway through the season unless it's that bad. And from the outside looking in, the Jets were trash, but they weren't that bad to fire I him. thought they were winning. I thought they were doing that, that winning season Nah, so they, they, they're losing right now, I'm going to say. But to C's point, it's not even halfway through the season. It's a quarter through the season they fired him. I will say, I'm not used to this shit. Most of the time when the coach gets fired halfway through the season, the team looks horrible. I'm talking about the offense is like not scoring. The defense is giving up 30, 40 points. And the defense has looked okay. You know, at times oh, my they bad carried season. the team. The defense have literally has literally carried the Jets. You know, so I'm shocked that he got fired. I'm shocked they ain't waited a little bit longer. I will say this. I would have thought this move would have been okay if they would have did one thing. And when they got the interim head coach they got, I was shocked. If you telling me they fired him to tell Bill Belichick, get your ass out of the booth, get your ass off of the Pat McAfee show, and come coach this team, I'm going to be real with y'all. I would have been like, yo, bro, you you in win-now mode. If you can get the greatest coach of all time to coach Aaron Rodgers and the, probably the greatest defensive mind of all time to coach that defense, fuck it. You do it, bro. And I would have had no problem with that. But if they don't do that, if they just stick with who they got now, yeah, that's going to be kind of whack, man. Um... See, Rose brought this up a couple weeks ago, man. When Aaron Rodgers went to hug Robert Sala, a lot of us tried to play it off. And now it seems like more was going on with that relationship, man. So it's unfortunate. But last thing, I told y'all weeks ago, we got to hold these organizations accountable. The same way that I brought up with the quarterbacks, we can't let these organizations just get away with just firing coaches and just hiring coaches every now, every cycle or whatever. You got certain teams that are still paying coaches from two years ago, and they're on their third head coach right now. Like, at some point in time, we can't just make it seem like it's just the quarterback messing up. It, it, we can't just make it seem like it's the coach messing up. At some point in time, these fucking owners got to get the fuck up out of the way, and you got to let the people that you hire to run the football team do their, do, fucking, do their fucking job. It's a reason why you're an owner. You made great business decisions. That don't mean you know nothing about football, bro. Let the football people run the football Jerry operations. Jones. Yeah, we talking about Dallas right now. Hey, man, more more football, man, more more running operations stuff. So the NCAA um, voted to eliminate the letter of intent. Um, see, you said this to us earlier. Explain that a little bit. Basically, the letter of intent was basically when you – you basically were saying you were going to go to this school, like – you're a high school student or whatever, you're a commit. You sign a letter, it's like, hey, I'm going to go to LSU. But well, it's not guaranteed. You it's don't not guaranteed. Yeah, you don't right. have to go. But it was like, hey, we placed, we placed our bets on you. You just screwed us when you, you – now you're going to Ohio State. Nah, it matters about if I'm starting. Like I, it matters if I'm starting, how much I'm getting paid. You know what I'm saying? With yeah, but, but it, and then it changed with the NI, with the NIL deals. Also, it changed too. So it was like, hold up, hold up, we paid you. Like, no, yo, we not. paid you. No, they're not. They're not. They're not paying like that. See, see, that was mistaken. A lot of these NFL, like you said, you know, NIL deals, they're not going through. They're falling through. So basically, people are was promised money that's not getting paid. It's more people not getting paid than actually getting paid, bro. Yeah, so now basically it's being replaced with a uh, financial aid package. It's tied to the contract. So basically, when you do this, the offer, the fi- it's, it's being called a financial aid package. It's similar to a contract. It's kind of like saying, like, hey, I intend to go to this school. All these other schools, once they sign that con- paper contract, they can't touch you. Right. It's like, it literally says, like, hey, he signed the o- OSU, he signed the USC. Hey, Oregon, back off. That makes sense. Georgia, back off. And then basically it's going to go into revenue sharing and other shit. That makes sense. That's going to follow it. So it's basically, it's adding on to the NIL deals. And it's also giving way to what a lot of people wanted to change with the letter of intent. It's basically saying like, hey, I signed to this school. We offered this kid 
financial aid and tuition and all this other shit, plus the, you know, whatever mm-hmm. NIL deals he got. So mm-hmm. it's going to change. It's not actually officially going into effect till next season anyway. It's approved, but it's got to reach the final approval following after everything wraps up next year. So, hey, April. so, so, what's the, so we are no more black tears. So are we going to um, sponsor a UGA kid or a Georgia Southern kid or? We can. Yeah, we can. That's what I'm saying. Are we? Like, y'all thinking about sponsoring? Uh, should we sponsor? Hey, get his other sponsors to sponsor us and we can make a deal. It's possible. That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? It's about networking. Let's get this money in the whole thing. So, brothers helping brothers. We, we, trying to, we trying to get it. So, hey. You got any thoughts on this, um, Rose? Uh, no, I think y'all, y'all split it out. No, nah, I ain't got no thoughts. Hey, man. Moving on from letters of intent to hits of intent. Saturday football is upon us again. We had another weekend of great college games. Are there any games this weekend you're looking forward to um, see in college football? The one number one game I'm looking for is number one, Texas versus Oklahoma. This is a classic big – I always get them mixed up. It's Big Ten or Big 12. I want to – hey, if I get them wrong, don't hate me. One of those classic matches. It's is literally – Is this the Red River? Yeah, Red River. It's actually a trophy. You know, it's it's an unofficial bowl game, basically. You know, mm-hmm. those classics. Yeah. Uh, around those classics. Rivalry, yes. We like Classic that. rivalry. It, mm-hmm. I wish they would have had – is it still going rivalry week? Yeah, they still have rivalry, but that's um, towards the end of the season. I wish they would have held this game till that. Um, but basically, Ears is – I'm fucking up his name, but Ears is starting. It's basically been said he – Texas is in a great situation. They got two great QBs. I'm betting my money on Ears. He's just – He's good. When he's playing, he's fucking good. And on his track record of playing Oklahoma over the past two seasons, he's been amazing. Um, it's going to be a great match. That's my one pick. Like, if it's a one game I want to see, it's that. Um, a highlight I want to make, second highlight, was Boise State versus Hawaii. Significance of this game, Hawaii's trash this year. I think Boise State is going to push – what's what's the guy's name? Um and the Heisman running. Talking about the running back? Yeah, the running back from Boise State. Out on uh, Gentry. 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 Is, is, if, he play, if he explodes this game, which he probably has a free way to do it, it's just going to add to his numbers. Uh, so another point I was going to make was with the, Q, with the Heisman race this year, it's one or two names I'm looking for. Running backs should. I'm not saying they are. I said they should win the Heisman this year. Their numbers are just too good. These QBs have good numbers, but they're not great. There's nobody playing where I'm saying, like, wow, this kid's a Heisman winner. The running backs are it's running. Cam from Miami. And then Cam, Cam Ward's, like, number three on the list. He's playing good. I got to see more from him for me. For him to get my vote, he was going to have to do a lot you know more. You know what I say about that, though? I like it. You already know who I like. I'm trying to get that white money. I like that Madden boy. And I like that Madden that, boy. He's, he's on the bench this week, so don't worry about it. No! Th- third game, third and final game I'm looking at is number nine. Those seven, eight, nine spots I'm always going to look at because they always affect the four, five, six. When those game, big, those, when, once those numbers have those big breakout games, they affect the higher – you know, the hierarchy. So, Ole Miss, LSU, good rivalry. LSU's, in any time you play a game of Baton Rouge, they're notorious for being one of the rowdiest fan club, but that's my third game. But besides that, it was the Heisman. I'm definitely looking at those numbers, man. Um, you you was talking about somebody for the Heisman, man. Uh, Colorado faces Kansas State. They both 4-1. and one. Travis Hunter. Has been playing excellent on defense and offense. I, I feel like, like I feel like he's in that Heisman running. Yeah, I, I feel like he's is. in that conversation because if you play both sides of the ball, Hands which down. Charles Woodson showed back Hands in what ninety nine, if you down. play both sides of the ball at a better level than Charles Woodson even played it back then, now, mm-hmm. and your team is winning, mm-hmm. I feel like he he deserves to be in that consideration. Now, no offense, Gentry is 
playing phenomenal though. To me, it's the one or two. I don't you care know, what it was. He's playing it's phenomenal too. So we'll we'll see what Colorado does. I saw me. I got on Shador last week. Shador, this is a ranked team you facing in Kansas State. They're four on one. If you want to be in that top five pick consideration, I need you to go out there. You ain't gotta win. But you need huh? to produce. You got to oh, win. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Fuck up. I guess win. a Kansas, ranked Kansas fuck State. Fuck bullshit. You got to win. I think Kansas State probably just going to have more talent. So they might not win because they might give up 45 huh? points, man. They might give up 45 points. But if they lose 45 to 40, that's not Shadur's fault. Okay. But if you lose 45 okay. to 13, Shadur, you the quarterback, bro. You. That's you. your fault, my nigga. I got you. You got to fall on that shore. So I got you. I got especially you. when you got someone got like Hunter – I hear averaging over 100 yards a game and then going on the defensive side and getting you a pick every once in a while, man. The second game, man, you know, number two, number three, two undefeated teams, Ohio State, Oregon, man. Oregon, they've always been on that, like, tier of potentially making the playoffs and being good. This year, they look different. This year, they looking like they, they can be a threat. Ohio State is always, you know, a, a contender. So we're, we're, we're going to see what happens in that game. It's unfortunate they're facing so early in the season. Well, I guess it kind of isn't unfortunate because they're going to have a chance to make up ground. But one of them is going to go to that number one spot. Whoever wins this game, I feel like probably would get jumped to the number one spot. I don't know who's number one right now. I think it's Texas, right? Texas number one. Texas. You know, so if one of these teams win in outstanding fashion, I feel like even if Texas win, they should go to that number one spot. And whoever loses, I don't feel like as long as they don't get embarrassed, should fall out of the top five because you're facing another highly ranked um, opponent. Um, any games, though, Rose? Just just one. Um, Vanderbilt and Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? Vanderbilt coming off a win off with um, Alabama. And Kentucky coming off of what, what they didn't win last week. They came off a win or Ole Miss two weeks ago. <laughs> so both of them facing each other. I think that should probably go be, should be an interesting game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's the only one. I think y'all named all the rest of them. Sure, who drew the face this week? George is uh, off. I think we play Florida Bobby. next week. Bye week. Yeah. Hey man, Florida's playing Tennessee number eight. Okay, oh, cool. No, so we should play it. Oh, we play Texas next week. We play Texas next week. Yeah, that's a good okay, hey man. Wrestle for that game, UGA that's man. That's a big game. That's a big game for yeah, UGA yeah. man. They gotta win. Hey, it's gonna be a lot of pros in that UGA Texas game, y'all. So if we win, do we go to number one? Yeah, we yeah, should. We, we probably would. It's gonna be a lot of pros in that um game though next week, man. So talking about the pros, hey man, are there any games y'all looking forward to this weekend in the NFL moving into week six? Steelers Raiders. I want to see which huh? which team. They're both like. Hey, we can't always say the obvious game. They're, Juice, they're some, on the tier. Sometimes you gotta say some low key games, man. It, 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 it's basically bullshit. Steelers. It's the Steelers three and two versus the Raiders two and three. You sound like a Steelers fan. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, that's the only reason why he brought this shit up. Oh, um, Raiders. I like. But it, it's basically saying like two. Let's be honest, two mid teams. Two two mid teams. But this this is gonna determine if Russell sees the field this year. Yeah, this game right Russell, here. Fields Russell has Russell another started. bad game. He's probably going to get benched, and Russell's probably going to take over that starting? Starting job. Who's starting? Fields Field. is still starting. So Russell playing now? Is he healthy? He's healthy. He practiced this week. Yeah. Okay. And he he's, he's supposed to be playing. he's supposed to be the number two quarterback. I think this will be the first game he dressed in uniform. That's what I'm saying. He's because I mean playing. with Pickett being third, he Pickett's didn't Pickett's dress, but he ain't had no helmet. Pickett's going to stay oh, okay. third string. Gotcha. But he's I guess he'll have a helmet this game. Yeah. Pick, Pickett Pickett is definitely going to stay third game third string. Um. Saints, Bucks, anytime you have on a matchup. Team no more. Oh shit! You play for Eagles. <laughs> you back up though, man. But what's the next game? Saints, Bucks. Uh, Saints, Bucks. Anytime you have a matchup, Saints, Atlanta, Saints, Bucks. Good rivalry we need game. Saints, we need Saints to win. Good rivalry game. That's the only reason I watch it. Yeah, so I don't care who wins that game. The Falcons beat both them niggas. Yeah. But what I need is the Saints. game to watch is going to be uh, the the DMV game. Washington versus Baltimore. Woo! The DMV. That's, 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 that's the game that we want to watch. Well, Washington score is right there. Wait, 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 what I think they're right? three and two, but it's, it's more about the quarterback play. Yeah, both are, both are very exciting. Both black are electrifying. Yes. Yes. Both two yeah. black quarterbacks. Um, honestly, man, you know, I think that could be a game to watch, but the game that I'm probably most looking forward to is a rematch from last year on Saturday. It was a Saturday night game. There was a late call in the game. They got the Lions screwed. 
And we and we saw the coach go for it on fourth down with three straight times on, on for, for two point conversion. Oh, no. That Lions Cowboys game, man. They gave us a classic game last year. And, and I think they got the potential to give us another classic game this year, it man. Be, it should be a good game. And then another game I'm looking forward to is the Bills Jets game. Both of them are battling for that number one in the AFC East. The Dolphins are all there done. Let's go let's go and put the Dolphins to the side. They're not in it no more. The Patriots have started a rookie quarterback, so they're not in it no more. It's gonna come down to the Bills and the Jets, and this can be a big game. Big game. You know, Jets just fired Robert Sala, like we said. Most of the time when you fire your coach, that first game, you come out pumped, you 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 play this well. And then the Bills, Josh Allen has he played horrible last week. What? Like I don't think there's a quarter. Let's be real. I don't think there's a quarterback in the league like Josh Allen. They can go out there and throw for five touchdowns, have two incompletions, rush for another touchdown, and look like Superman. But then the very next fucking game Garbage. look worse. Not not even be Clark Kent. Be 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 Clark Kent best friend, the little reporter, <laughs> J- Jesse or whatever. Like that's how bad what? Josh Allen looked last week. He was horrible, bro. He completed nine passes last week. You know, so, but guess what? Aaron Rodgers played horrible overseas in London last could've week, though. Could have been pushing, could, 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 could somebody put a put on him and shit, be putting on him at the wrong time, so he was just like, two fuck up. <laughs> Oh, Nigga, what? <laughs> Yo, and then uh, shout out. Hey, that's exactly what Jeff Spence was thinking. Rob Sala got fired. <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, what it, see, what it was, Stefan Diggs on the other side was like, man, he keep looking at me. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I think he was. I think. I think Stefan Diggs was in his head. He probably did get in that nigga head, man. Yeah. Hey, Josh, you got the commercials, bro. You got to show that you deserve the commercials because you got more commercials than a two time. Been to be possibly third time MVP in Lamar Jackson, but he's some respect on my nigga name. And moving on to TNT, y'all. Dino Mike. Boom. So somber news. We done lost a lot of legends this 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 last couple weeks. And we lost another one um this week. Sissy Houston, um, the mother of Whitney Houston, you know, two-time Grammy winner, gospel singer, you know, backup singers for the likes of um Aretha Franklin, and also her niece is Diane Ward, which is another. Where she stayed at? You know, the city she stayed in and lived in. No. Which is an which which is another Led Jay singer. I'm thinking it's probably it's probably in Jersey. Google somebody Google it real quick. Tears and no tears. Tears and no tears. Sees. Uh, tears. I mean, she's a legend. Even though people are going to know, know most people are going to know her as Whitney Mama. But at the same time, she definitely did. You know, she was a gospel singer for a long time. You'll see her discography. Um, I didn't know she was related to Deanne Warwick. If you don't know who Deanne Warwick is, do you research? She sung and wrote a whole lot of fucking songs. But it's like they're one of those families. It's like the Houstons are one of those families, like the, the Clarks, the Shears, um, the Shears sisters, and all these other different um but you know, classic. Been in a lot of, been around for a long time. You know, um, you know, rest in peace. Yeah, man. Uh, she was also a backup singer for Shaka Khan and even Elvis. Man, you, that's that's just some legendary shit right there, man. You know, to be able to touch all those legends I just named, and like you said, you related to Diane Ward, which is she's a legend in her own right. You're the mother of Whitney Houston, and not, Sissy Houston, like I said, she's a two time Grammy winner her goddamn self. You know, for the gospel, especially if you're someone that loves gospel music. So, um, rest in peace, man. But, you know, she was 91 years old, man. I remember somebody I was talking to, I told them what happened, and they was like, oh, no, I can't believe it. I was like, damn, how long you wanted the bitch to live? She was 91 years old. <laughs> so she was 100. Point, I'm just saying. Yeah, she's from New Jersey, but at some point in time, we all got to pass away. 91 is a long time, and I feel like if you're still breathing and you live through the civil rights movement, man, hey. You should be thankful, man, because a lot of y'all didn't make it through that time period. So, you know, rest in peace to her and, and tears. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, just got one question. So when Whitney was always talking about Sissy and all those documentaries and everything, she was calling her Mama Sissy or was that somebody else? I thought that was somebody else. Nah, she talking about her mama, man. She talking about her mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah shout out Newark. New, 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 now, New Jersey. Now, what is she You can't call your mom by her first name. <laughs> God damn. Um... And talk about another legend in the making. So for those who know Daniel Kuala, the actor from uh, Man Character from Get Out, 
also played in the Judas and the Black Messiah, was nominated for Oscar for that role. Great movie. You know, played in the Black Panther movie. Has a lot of, you know, roles that he's he's done. He's from London. He was honored in Leicester um, Square with a statue. The statue is basically of him in the sunken place looking up. Um, tears of joy, man. Like, it, like, you know, he got a lot of roles, a lot of movies that I've seen him in. I'll be honest. Get Out was his most famous role, but probably his best role, best two roles I saw was Widows. You know, the movie with him, Viola Davis, and Liam Neeson, where he played like a gangster. Like, he was very compelling in that role. But also, man, I, I can't lie, man. Judas and the Black Messiah, his role in oh. that as Fred Hampton, like, he, like the way he talked and the way he conducted himself in that, it was very compelling. And I watched that movie maybe twice because it was so good watching how he acted in that movie, man. So, tears of joy for uh, him, man. He's doing a lot of great things. And he even shouted out um, Chad Bosworth. I said how Chad Bosworth big bro with him and put him on the trajectory that he's on now. Uh, tears, man. Um, for a different reason. Uh, great actor. Uh, Lester, shout out to Lester. Lester, London, England. It's not London, but Lester, England. You know, them London, them English boys, they definitely doing their thing. Uh, England's got a lot of great actors. For some reason, it seems like they take it ser real serious. Um, Idris Elba, name, I can name 15 actors, not just black actors, but just actors, period. They got a hey, lot of- Your boy Franklin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, definitely Franklin. Um, Paperboy. Paperboy. <laughs> Then uh, what's what's the dude from uh from BMF? Oh yeah, uh, I only uh, laugh, bro, cause he said he said Paperboy, and nigga, that nigga been making rounds on the internet, bro. Oh, Paper, Paperboy's British? Yeah, yes. Oh shit, I didn't know that. I, I, I always see him speaking American. That nigga, that nigga might be gay too. <laughs> oh, no. Besides that, yeah, he weird. He weird. I ain't gonna lie, he weird. Yeah, um, from BMF. I know you talking about. Uh, but yeah, the. the I forgot his name though. Yeah, I know you're talking about. That. But uh, Lamar. Lamar, Lamar from BML. Yeah, Lamar. It's a lot of British actors that do American accents, vice versa. But they they take it seriously. Sadness. Why I'm saying tears is out of all statues, you pick this. Why can't it just be a picture of you just standing up? Like all oh, everybody else got a statue. I wish they would have waited a little bit later. But I'm guessing it's like, hey, if Augusta tells, hey, hey, Rose, hey, Vertizzi. Hey, Juice Man, what do? we're going to make a statue of you. And they got you sitting in the corner like this, but they made it. It's your most iconic photo or what you're most known for. You look, you slumped over in the corner because you was drunk or something, but they made decide to make a statue. Hey, who's who's going to argue I, against I, I'm gonna you? I'm going to be happy, bro. You, take you know how hard it is to get a fucking statue, bro? You know how many Lakers I'm have you. died and they still don't have a statue, bro? Hey, man, it's hard to get a statue, man. Yeah, but shout out to you, PJ Brown. But yeah, shout out to uh, listeners in England. Shout out to England. Shout out to the listeners in England, man. Shout out to Daniel. Uh, appreciate you, man. Keep doing good work, man. Yeah, I ain't got no tears for it, but I'm happy for him. Um, anytime you get a statue, you, that's forever. So I, I, I ain't nothing but love him. He's a good actor. Um, I think he's a good person, too, from, from things that I heard. I don't know him, but he seems like a, a pretty good stand-up guy. Hey, man, talking about stand-up guys or stand-up people. So we, we've we been keeping up with the YSL trial for the last year. Free Jeffrey, by, by goodness gracious. Yeah, man. Um, so apparently a deputy in the Fulton County by the name of Carmen Bailey, where ex-deputy, was apparently arrested and charged with bringing a contraband to Marquavius Uwe's mom. <laughs> Um, I got tears because I'm surprised that some people are even shocked by this. This this happens every day mm -hmm. in the correctional system right. for niggas who don't even have that kind of bread. Mm -hmm. So it's like, bro, I can only imagine if Boosie was locked up or Boosie family members was locked up. Ti or Ti family members was locked up. It's like, yo, bro, you know how much money like a cell phone for a regular nigga is like a thousand. Like, if Boosie family on a cell phone, you could probably get five to eight bands off a cell phone. How much for a flip phone? Nigga, a band! For a flip phone? Yes, nigga! Damn. Like, if you want an iPhone, that's at least 1500 man. That's probably 1500 easily, man. So, 
I'm not even shocked by this, man. I do got tears because this is the this is the system we live in, and this is the corruption, and this is the reason why it's just so hard, man. Corruption is just going to run rampant in the uh, legal system and you know in society. Uh, I got tears, man. Uh, the significance of this case, it's 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 not what happened. It's the facts around the shit because it's involved in the YSL trial. Jeffrey probably is not going to get out of jail for like the next three, four years. They're already talking about they literally beat the church. The jury selection process is the longest ever in Georgia so, history. So can I ask a question? Oh, if, if, it's, if it's been taking this long and they say it's going to take that long, in the words of Rose, why don't they just free that man and let that man just be on house arrest while he wait for this play? We've all been he's saying he's that. Gonna be the he's going to be doing the same thing that he did for um, Richard with Tom Sir. So by the time they serve him the sentence, oh, Tom Sir. So it's like two, three years from now. And then also, Tom the other crazy part about this is they have over 200 witnesses. We've seen trials where they got six witnesses, and we're like, when is this trial going to be over? They've only called 40 witnesses so far. So it's like the state of Georgia, why the fuck are you wasting these taxpayers' money with this long-ass bullshit-ass trial? My second point is nobody's surprised about it. It's just the fact that you are involved on a highly visible, that's the word, visible case that you only you only asked for $500. I would have been like... Nah, send me twelve hundred dollars. I thought she got caught for bribery too. Like, bribery uh, and then uh, most, uh, and then Apple Pay from the dude's mama. You could have got the cousin. So, so she didn't get like that hundred thousand. Nah, she got five hundred from the dude's mama. Oh, for some right. pills. You, you already know, man. High school, she rode a short bus. Yeah, yeah, she did. And yeah. she's a she's a deputy sheriff. And then the other two were corrections officers. So they said, because Lord know, I would have got that bag. And then when I turn my resignation, it's like, God damn, man, why why you gone? Man, I don't need this job no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I I got tears, not for her, but for Jeffrey. He's still in there eating that jail food. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of other rappers that could be in there eating that jail food, man. Free Jeffrey, man. And and, and somebody need to pardon Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, talk, talking about Diddy, man. So Ray J started his new show. Well, like a little podcast called The Reality Check. And on the first episode, he said he talked about how, you know, a lot of people are losing their manhood, their womanhood, their asses are being taken away. Say, say it say like he said it though. Ass is being taken away that we can't understand. And this nigga said people making jokes about baby oil. Do you laugh? Do you chuckle? Do you make jokes? He said, Hey man, KY, I can get, you know, some all white jelly. Yo, I got tears of laughter. Ray J, if this is the content you're going to produce, nigga, keep producing it, nigga, because that little two-minute clip I saw had me rolling. And more importantly, it wasn't the fact what he said. This nigga looked in the camera, and there was not a laughter in his emotion. This nigga was dead serious with every word that left his fucking mouth. When he said ass is being taken in ways that we can't comprehend, I was like, damn, nigga, I thought ass was only taken one way. There's other ways to take ass. <laughs> like, so tears, bro. Yeah, I got I got tears of laughter. Just Ray J is just one of them niggas that's like, you know he's talented, yeah. He's got a couple songs, or whatever. Everybody knows, remembers him as Brandy's brother, acting, and all this other shit. And then like he's had so many videos over the years. He's just a funny nigga without trying. It's like this, this nigga be dead serious. But you look at this nigga and you like, damn, this nigga's hilarious. Um, I remember there's a video going around with, with this nigga's on like loving hip hop or some shit where his, his hat, hat, his hat changes like it's like nigga, like nigga. Every time they turn the camera away from you, you like his hat was changing in different positions. And then like yo, I think Vince Staples was on a, was on like uh. What's the dude from MTV's name, man? I can't think of his name right now. But the dude from MTV um, with the hat. Uh, uh, I don't know. In the morning. Sway? In the morning. Sway in the morning. Sway had a a video with Vince Staples a couple years ago where he was talking about how Ray J is an OG and he really been in the game and this shit. It's like, yeah, it's believable. Because, like, the nigga's famous for 
a multitude of shit. It ain't you can't just say like, oh, Ray J is just Bernie's brother. He's an actor. Or, oh, he's a singer. He was fucking with Whitney. This nigga was on Love and Hip Hop. He dropped one of the best, arguably one of the best R and B songs. Oh, I was about to say sex tape. Yeah, and then like the Kim K shit. Like he made this bitch famous. So I mean, yeah, he keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing, he man. Made her famous, but she always had the money. Yeah, man. Shout out to Ray J, man. Keep doing your thing, bro. Yeah, so what we got next, so we're teasing? Yeah, man. Um, talk about making people famous, man. So, Sydney Starr, who some people heard about her through her alleged relationship with rapper Chingy back in the day. She was on the Adam 22 podcast with Dez McCary, and basically, during the interaction, she said, hey, Adam, I no longer have my penis. My baby Darius, he 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 got it taken care of with that song money. They killed my baby off, but I no longer have my penis. Um, so is she a dude or she a woman? I got tears, man. Before or after? It's a dude still. Before it was a dude, and it's after it's still a dude. dude. It's just a dude when I had to cut it off. Hey man, I I, I just get the whole thing. So he he he, he, he shit. Get the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> they, them, him. Shim? They, them, him, her. That's it, I don't know. Yeah, man, I got tears, man. Eddie Winslow, man, I, know what you, I don't know what you got going Not on, man. Eddie! Like, hey, man, tears. Man, Eddie ain't been right okay. since they jumped on him. <laughs> I mean, and he came I mean, home and okay. had tell her, tell her, tell her. <laughs> it's like, what happened to you, Eddie? I think his <laughs> his downfall started with Superhead. Ever since then, it was he ain't even right. Ever since, what happened with Superhead? He was fuck. He was one of them people that was he, fucking. He Superhead. took care. He took care of her. I, I think he was, was even married to her for a little bit. Yeah. yeah he, nah, matter of fact, he married Superhead. I forget about that shit. Mm-hmm. Even though Rick James told him not to. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, it's you know what's fucked up with her story. He her his he, he his her her. Their story, Sydney Star story, is she lied about seeing. Fucked up that man's whole career. Um, man, he was just on it. He was just he would just perform. He all right. I, I get I, yeah. I, But I mean that whole story, it's like Eddie that got Hollywood. You didn't been in Hollywood so long. He literally looked at her, looked at him or whatever, looked at Star like you wasn't supposed to say that shit on air. And <laughs> shit was funny as fuck. Um Hey, I ain't got no tears for yo yo yo. Whatever you want to do, do what you. Yeah. Not Eddie, man. I ain't Eddie. I ain't got no tears for this either, man. But I got one question. What's wrong with these hoes, y'all? Yeah, pretty much. What's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? Hey, man. So there was uh, a man who broke out some statistics saying that sixty-one percent of incarcerated men have multiple baby mamas. Then he added. 58% of black women have multiple baby mamas, I mean baby daddies, compared to 35 to 37% of Hispanic women, and then compared to 22 to 28% of white women. And me and C's was talking, and we was like, man, what's going on with this baby parent culture, especially in the black community? C's, why do you think the numbers is so much higher in the African American community? Compared to some of these other communities, I always say whenever you have these studies, I feel like the numbers are skewed. Uh, you're never gonna have a hundred percent concrete, thorough numbers, but it's just been promoted in the culture of black culture. It's been accepted to have when we say baby parent, we mean baby mama, baby daddy. So it's like baby parent. So it's both parents. Closer. It's literally like, hey, how many? Black women are getting married. How many black women, black men are getting married? Everybody, we've gotten to a point in society where people just feel comfortable having kids with people with no intentions to get married. It's like, okay, if you're going to have kids with somebody, let it be with somebody that you intend on being for a long time. I don't, I'm not saying get married. I'm saying let it be with somebody that you actually care about or want to be with. Don't just have a baby like, oh, let me have one, two kids, pop it out. And then the the 68% of incarcerated men. So it's basically these, part of my French, these niggas are getting out of jail, popping a baby in a bitch just to go back to jail. 
and then start the cycle over. If you had, if you have more than two, if you're a woman and you have more than two ba- two baby daddies, you have two kids and two baby daddies, or you have three kids, two baby daddies, or five kids and three baby daddies, it starts getting to the point to where it's like you have to look at yourself as a person. We question your decisions, not that other person's. And then the other flip side is like you niggas feel comfortable just nothing bitches and making babies. But guess what? I guess the caveat is like, oh, I'm going to jail anyway. I don't have to pay child support. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It's a trophy for some of these niggas. Let's keep it real, bro. So for, for, for a lot of these niggas, it is a trophy to be able to have some of these bitches as your baby mama. Like when you see some of these bitches that like are some of the attractive women in the city or whatever, that's a trophy to be like, oh yeah, that's my baby mama right there. Like that's that. If, if that's still the case, I know it used to be like that. Nah, it, that that's still is the case, bro. Because I be I be on Instagram and Facebook and I see some of these hoes that be popping in the city and. They'll pop out pregnant and niggas be happy that's their baby mama. They would not, they don't fuck with the bitch. That's not their girl. But they be like, yeah, man, that's, the, that's my baby mama or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, hey, man, to a lot of these women, for niggas, that's like just a nigga's way of just planting his flag in you, man. Like, that's like a, that's, that's a nigga's way of being able to have access to you for as long as both y'all are alive, 18 man. 18 years. And you the know? words are kind, yeah. Yeah. And the words are easy. 18 years. 18 years. I got you for 18 years. It's like, when you have a kid with somebody, it's not just 18 years. You can say, oh, our kid's grown. I'm done with you forever, bitch. No. Some people do that. You're tied to the kid for life. That's your kid. The even kid, if, not the mama. Even if you want to be, I'm not, be like, the kid's going to be like, oh, my mama said such and such and such. Do you want to come to this barbecue with me, dad? I ain't seen you in a minute. Just come through for me. Yeah. Fuck, fuck mama. Fuck whatever mama talking about. Just come to this barbecue for me. So I'm going to just say this. Me and some other members of this group podcast will tell you, as I always put stop, wrap that shit up. Stop doing it. Hey, man, I, I'm just going to say this. It, it's interesting to me. What stuck out for me wasn't the fact that black women was number one. Like that, I didn't even care about that. Like black women could have been number one. I ain't give a fuck. What bothered me when I looked at statistics was like, yeah, you're right. These numbers are always going to be skewed. What's the statistics real quick? 58, 35, 22. What's so, that? 58% black women. 35 Hispanic women, which stereotypically are supposed to be the most fertile, and then 22 white women oh, in terms of women that have multiple baby daddies. Okay. Like, what bothered me with those numbers, this is what bothered me with those numbers. God damn, it's not close. Like, black women is out here, like, just wrapped, wrapped in the field. Like, that's yeah, but basic. You, but the reason why is because you, when you hear black women, the, the first two things you hear is, is is strong or independent. independent. And that's what I'm saying. And, and like, so so they thinking they had like, okay, I I don't need you. I can leave. And they'll they black women are the first pers- persons to leave. And and that's to me wh- where I want to go at because like to see his point, yes, the numbers may be screwed, but if it was different, if it was 58 percent black women and let's say 50 percent white women, mm-hmm. hey man, that's that's close, man. Those numbers might be fucked up. But it's such they don't a, want to leave it. But it's such a fucking big fucking gap. At some point in time, we do have to look at black women and be like, to Rose's point, why are you leaving these relationships? I know too many black women be, be, be that has two, three kids with one nigga and literally will leave that nigga for some petty reasons or whatever. Like, we just seen Cardi B stay with Offset, had three kids. Now she's talking about she want to divorce the nigga. Like, bitch, you had three kids with this nigga. Like, why, why is you leaving? At this point, to me, you invested. That's like working for the state or the feds for 10 years or being in the military for 15 years and saying, you know what? I quit. You five Nigga, years. you close to the finish line. You five you years might as well, You might as well stick it out. You might as well be a man and stick it out. Don't be a pussy. Bitch, you might as well stick it out. That nigga been beating your ass for 10 years Yo, through two kids. Pussy. She <laughs> you know, so that, that shit crazy to me. But as Stop far being as, quitters, black women. And, but as far as the incarcerated part, though, that's even crazy because it's like, Yo, so you hoes are really going out for the juice and just really laying these niggas that's locked up. Like, and that's the part I wish I would knew is how many of these niggas out at 61 are leaving prison, making you the baby mama, compared to they was free and made you the baby mama and got locked up. Like, that's still crazy the fact it's 61% of niggas in jail. I think that niggas who don't have jobs, 
niggas who getting fed by the state or the feds, niggas who probably calling you, asking you to put money on day books and shit. Yeah, most of them is probably... Did it before they got in there because most of them was probably like some dope boy. And that's or, another thing. So or, you thought it was okay to get to get to get pregnant by the dope boy, to mm-hmm. get pregnant by the scammer. And I'm gonna keep it real. That fast money is cool, but it's my only thing. At some point in time, when you know that you live in a criminal lifestyle, if you decide to entertain that type of man or even that type of woman, at some point in time, it's gonna be outcome. At some point in time, it's gonna lead to they're gonna be in prison or they're gonna be in the grave. Like there, there is no middle ground, bro. There is no four hundred one k. There is no pension in that shit. There is no retirement plan. Ask ghost. You know exactly. Prime example. Ask ghost. You know so. You <laughs> Damn. Know. Uh, fuck, fuck the power producers. I'll, I'll say that. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, just to add on to your point though, is just like add to your point and Rose's point. It's like okay, they make these relationships. We question your choices. Why did you get into the relationship from the beginning? Why did you allow them to make a child? Like, why are you... They was hypnotized by the Flash. It's always the Flash. You pick the, the bling, bad bling. boys. The bling bling. Well, you gotta look at what, you gotta look at what's on TV, man. For movies, TV shows. Look at half of these movies on 2B. 2B is targeting black people. And most of these 2B movies, especially these like low-budget movies, is drug dealers, game bangers, scammers and stuff, even the women be strippers and stuff. You listen to the music. You listen to what Sexy Red is putting out there. I didn't even know Sexy Red had a kid before she had this one that she just popped out her vagina you know, recently. You look at what Meg, the kind of music Meg's making. You look at what Cardi B's doing and stuff like that. Like, this is embedded in the culture because this is what kids are seeing and this is what's becoming cool and it's like an endless cycle. Because we've already talked about this on the podcast last year. Check out some of the early episodes. When black fathers are not present, it leads to the destruction of kids. So when you got 61% of men, and we already know the numbers from prison, so even though it didn't break down race-wise, let's just be safe and say 30% of those men are probably black in that 61. When you got 30% of those black men not being home to raise their kids, that's detrimental when you cannot be there physically for your kid. Rose, they talked about a couple weeks ago. Like, there's certain things that you can pick up when you're around your child 24-7. Like, when they don't want to tell you something, you can see that their mood has changed. You can see something's bothering them. We saw that episode of Everybody Hits Chris when Chris talked to his dad about some bullying from another friend, and his dad picked up on it and basically followed him. Like, this is why fathers need to be present. And also, even if you're not locked up, if you got multiple kids by multiple women, you cannot spend time with all of them. That's problematic too because your kids need more than just money. They need your time you to be raised properly, man. And that, that's my last you thoughts on that. I want to let Rose wrap it up as the only person out of all three of us that even have kids. I think you said it clearly enough, man. You, it, it's, it's a rap already, man. I think you said it clear enough. And other, than, other things since we talked about rap, since the C's come out, wrap it up. Take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's dangerous out here, man. If people, I remember a lady told um, well, one of my homeboys' mom is telling him, what's that? He said, every time you think about having uh, sex with somebody, this is this, remember, this could be your baby mama. This, this, so if you have sex with this person, are you prepared for this to be your baby mama? Unless you're going to be like Adam Sandler and, and, and Big Daddy and fucking a bitch and be like, mama, daddy, you never got to worry about me. I'm in love with a beautiful woman. That makes plenty of money. You can call her my sugar mama. But most of you niggas, that ain't the case. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Speaking about being in love with people and taking care of them and looking out for them. So Michael Vick was on Vlad TV a couple months ago. And Vlad was just talking to him about everything that happened when, you know, he was dog. Well, not when he was dog fighting. His homeboys was dog fighting. And why he was looking out for them. He said, well, these are my homeboys. These are my friends. Like, if we walk in the house and you find a quarter of a million, you're not going to feed them? And Vlad said, man, it's hard. And Vic said, nah, it's not hard. It's easy for me. Yo, what are friends obligated to do for you? When should you tell friends no? And what's your commitment to them? And is it okay to look out for your homeboys? Yeah, it's definitely okay to look out for your people, man. Like, people are your friends for a reason. What I will say on the same sense of, I'm going to go through the, the track and the story and say, Take care of your people, love your people, but don't let your friends make you go broke. 
if it was a case where we was at somewhere, we found 20 million in a bag in a corner. And I said, yo, everybody else is outside just doing whatever. And I found a bag of 20 million. I'm not going to hoard to myself and be like, yo, I found 20 million. Everybody going to be like, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? Oh, I don't know, bro. It's just some dirt. And I take it and I go in my house and I got 20 million. Now nah, I'm going to be like, yo, we found this bag together. It's four of us. We split that four ways. Five million a piece. Everybody taken care of. Don't act. Once I give you that four, that five million though, don't ask me for shit. I don't want to hear a week later, yo, I done bought a car and went to Atlanta, Magic City, and spent thirty thousand dollars. I'm fucked up, man. Like, nah, bro. It's like take care of your people. Just don't do it stupidly. And on the flip side is. Respect, have respect for your friends when it comes to shit. It's just like you can't expect, you're not supposed to expect shit. It's like at the same time, respect them. Respect your friends and at the same time, being a friend, don't say it's fucked up. It's different from like beef, us finding 20 million is different from somebody winning the lottery. The lottery is like, yo, it's like it's my money. What's the difference? It's a lot of difference. Because to me, you find that 20 minutes million is you winning the lottery. When we you found got lucky, no, no, you no, got no, lucky no. nigga, you walked in the back room when while we, we was outside. But we found this money together. No, we was outside smoking the joint. This lottery we, ticket, I bought it. I'm gonna take care of you, but don't expect me to give you five million a piece. If I win 20 million, I'm not giving you five million a piece. Like I'm not saying spending. you got to bring us up either way, but I'm saying I don't know the difference. And then the other difference is I'm not going to break you off and give you like, oh, here's a million. I got win 20 million. Oh, here's, I got five, I got six or seven friends. That's a taxes. So what, what's that? So that's 10. That's right? 10 million. I'm not going to give, oh, here's a million dollars. Here's a million dollars. Here's a million dollars. Like, nah. Why not? Here's a couple thousand. Don't let your friends make you go broke. <laughs> As a friend. How much money do you need to not be broke? That's my question. As a friend. But how much money do you need to not be broke, see? That's my question. I just hit the millions. Why am I going to give all my money away? You're not giving all your money. You got 10 million. You got four friends. You give each one a million. That's four million you gave away. You still got six million. I still got a lot and, more and, money and, to and, give and, away, and, though. Is six million going to stop you? I got, I got a lot more money to give away, though. I got to take care of family, too. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't giving no money away, but we all go. We go, all go I'm like, saying, I got you, million. though. Don't expect me to just give you like, oh, I won twenty million. We I'm gonna, gonna go give on, you fifteen minutes. We about to go on a trip. I'm gonna give you some money on this trip and do not, ball but out. Not, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, finance your lifestyle. Though. Exactly. It's like, don't expect me to go win this twenty million. But, but why I gotta be looked at? You finance your lifestyle. Why I can't be looked at like LeBron James? Yo, I'm gonna break. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Rich Paul on the payroll. I'm paying him forty thousand a year. To if be my homeboy so he can invest in his life. Are, so guess what? That's, you, that's you, as time, time, you as a friend. Time, you as a friend. Are you going to do that? Are you going to do that? If it was me, if I had that kind of money, yes, because I believe in what my friends can do. And that's if the you setup. you got friends that you can believe. The setup. When I nah, say I got you. the setup. If you got friends that you believe in their potential, which is what LeBron did. LeBron saw the potential of Rich Paul, Mavic Carter. And guess what? Those are, That's probably the greatest investment LeBron James ever made in his fucking life. Because yeah. Rich Paul is one of the greatest agents to date. This nigga has athletes in soccer, baseball, football, basketball, and he got rappers. Look at what Maverick Carter's doing in business. Look what he's doing in Hollywood. That is probably the greatest fucking investment I'm LeBron ever made in a, his fucking I'm friends. Now, if you got the wrong type of friends, this goes to relationships. If you got the wrong type of woman, don't invest in that woman. If you got the wrong type of nigga, don't invest in that nigga. But me, I trust my homeboys. I trust what my homeboys can do. I trust their intellect. I trust their capabilities. So if I give Rose five hundred thousand, I know he's going to make a profit of that five hundred thousand. Now, if you saying that you don't think you got homeboys like that, don't give that homeboy five hundred thousand. If you think he's going to go to Bali and blow four hundred thousand and come back six months later and they ask for another five hundred thousand, that's what I'm saying. What I don't see the big deal. If you feel like you got those kind of friends, then you need to invest in them because guess what? That could be an investment that ten years down the road. Could be the difference in you making more money because now LeBron James is in Hollywood doing things because of the relationships Maverick Carter got. Yeah, that's the thing though. It wasn't like LeBron made a million dollars and gave Rich Paul five hundred thousand. He probably gave him a hundred thousand. 
He just put, I think he put them on the payroll. Yeah, he put them on the payroll. It's like pay, what's, put, what's the difference between me breaking you off money and putting you on the payroll? It's like, hey, bro, I'm going to give you a job, nigga. That's, it's a difference because the, the payroll is going to keep him around, keep you doing the right thing. And you're going you go, you go to learn, like, hey, this guy right here, he's not that. So and that's I, that, need to, I need to take him off the payroll. Instead of giving somebody a million dollars, it's like, well, that's what he did for Rich Paul because Rich Paul didn't have a role at that moment. And that's, but the other homeboys who had roles, he just gave them money because they had roles already established. They already had I think that's the to thing. go to college and stuff. I, so he just went ahead and paid the tuition and put money in their pocket. I think that's one of the things. It's like, don't expect the money. It's like, everybody say. does something. Everybody has a role. Even if it's like, okay, one person makes it. They made it all this money. It's a, it, it's it's a mutual thing. It ain't just like, oh, I'm giving my money. My homeboy gave me a million dollars, and now I'm gonna ball out. It's like, nah, I'm gonna start my business. I always be, this conversation we've been having about starting a business. Now I got the money to start it. But you know which homeboys is that, and which homeboys ain't that though. You know which homegirls that is, and you know which homegirls that ain't. Yeah, and like you know, you know which friends. Yo, if I give this nigga a thousand, this nigga finna straight pay this, pay, pay spend this on pussy. <laughs> I'm just saying, and you know, if I give this homeboy a thousand, he finna go and try to get himself a car so he can go and make some money. You know which homeboys you can trust to do that kind of stuff with, and you know which ones you need to be like, nah, I need to watch this nigga, man, because this nigga gonna fuck it up. And it's like at the same time, it's like that's why I say don't. Ex- but like, in Michael Vick's case, understand, Michael Vick just signed a hundred fucking million dollars. This was like what 2004, 2007 when when he signed his contract, like, bro. A hundred million dollars is a lot in twenty twenty four. He also got fucked over. But I'm, but I'm saying that's a lot. A lot, in lot 20, of people. But I'm saying that's a lot in twenty twenty four. Let's go back. Let's take ourselves back to two thousand seven, two thousand six. A hundred million dollars. And I think it was, before we even talk about him was, being on the cover of Madden, before we talk about yeah. his shoe deal, before we talk about his Gatorade deal yeah. and all these deals, Michael Vick even said, "I didn't have to tell niggas know that much because I had it like that." If it you was, got it like got, that, then he got guaranteed what forty. Or thirty seven, yeah, something like that. And then it was like, and but Michael Vick did say he uh, also it's like his homeboys didn't really do anything. He just they were just around, and he just was like, oh, they say this is us. I'm like, okay, let's do this. But this this was the life that he lived. Yeah, this is what he wanted. It's like it ain't like he somebody talking him into doing anything. Like, yeah, it's this, like yo, you made it. You yo, you ain't gonna take stuff. care of the people. He wanted to do this stuff, just like LeBron James. Like ain't nobody talking into doing nothing. Like. This is the thing that he wanted to do. And I, but I'll say this right here. I feel like for the most part, if the love is genuine, mm-hmm. if the love is genuine, don't nobody have to ask me. Yeah. Like I can see, I can tell, okay, my homeboy, <laughs> he don't get paid for two weeks. I just got paid, got got it. I'm gonna spend fifty dollars on the bottle. He ain't gotta ask me and say, yo, Vertizi, man, my pockets is hurting. I, you ain't gotta ask people that you fuck with to rock with you. Now, if I got now, if you if you, if you gotta ask them. And y'all might not be really rocking with each other like that. Like, if, if it's like that, if you got a hundred million dollars in the bank and you afraid to come out of your home board because you know rent is due for that nigga and that nigga been struggling, hey, y'all might not really rock with each other like that. You might be on some Jay-Z shit. I don't go to family reunions because I'm afraid about someone asking for 4800. Man, you a billionaire. You can't give your cousin 4800. And then it's like, okay, you give him this work like that. You give him this 4800. Two months later, hey, I need fifteen hundred for the, you know, you know, moms is in the hospital, and you keep coming around. It's like, what have you been doing but, with the money? But, I set you up. But we can't make it seem like every celebrity gets goes broke like that. Like for those who know Ice T, first baby mama D, she talks about when Ice T was first coming up, all he did was give his family members money and her family members money. Ice T is far from broke. Because he like, ain't constantly like, like, working. Like, like, you just got to know when to say no, how much to give people, whatever. We don't have to create this mindset of, oh, if I give this nigga two bands, even though I'm worth 50 million, I'm going to go broke. Then you might have a problem then. Yeah. You might have a problem. Because I'm going to keep it real. I don't need 20 million to not be broke. Like, if, if, if I woke up tomorrow and I had 500,000, I'd be like, damn, man, that's a lot of money in my bank account. Like, so if you wake up tomorrow and you got 20 million and your mindset becomes, I, I I don't know if I'm gonna be able to have this money in five years. Then what's wrong with your mindset, then, bro? Because you should not be living no type of way from how you living today. Where if I gave you twenty million tomorrow, you are gonna be fucked up. And it's like I think it's the mindset is like everybody becomes. It's like okay, this person got this, all this money, right? And then 
30 people come to you talk about, hey, I need this. Hey, I need this. I want to do this. You just giving out money. Family member, all right, auntie, boom, cousin, this, friend, homeboy from back in the day, this. Then one homeboy is starting a business. All right, my nigga set. Boom. Best in, one of the best investments I ever had. Best relationship. Boom, boom. You got three or four of those relationships. Shorty. Shorty from back in the day. We ain't together, but I took care of her. She started her business. Hey, see what you're doing, bro? You naming people. Like, like, like you naming people. What like, I'm saying. Like, like this home, is what happens home, to home people. Homeboy home back in the day. Shorty back in the day. This is what happens to people, though. Nah, see, I'm talking about. This is how people I'm get talking, fucked no, up. I'm talking about my homeboys. This, this is how like, people get fucked I'm, up, I'm, I'm going to say the difference between me and maybe you. If you one of my close homeboys, then you my brother. So I'm going to do for you like I would do for my blood brother. I wouldn't let my blood brother be homeless. I'm not going to let my homeboy be homeless. I wouldn't let my, I wouldn't let my blood brother walk no 10 miles nowhere. And it's I'm a fine gonna, line. I'm not going to let my homeboy and it's a fine walk no line. 10 miles nowhere. No, it ain't no fine no, 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 line for me. No, 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 no. Get, it ain't no fine out, line for me. Hear me out. Hear me out. It's a line between, okay, I'm going to make sure you straight. I give you 250000 you go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar car. You don't own your house. What the fuck? Why the fuck did you put the money I gave you to buy your house? Pay your rent for the next two years. And can I keep real, bro? Can I keep can I keep a hundred? If I got a hundred million dollars and your house is worth a hundred thousand, and, and you and, and, and the total of it is three hundred thousand, can't be real, bro. If I woke up with a hundred million tomorrow, your house paid for. It. Your house paid for. It. Legally, well, I was paid for, legally, nigga. Legally, you like still got to go to the person and be like, hey, I'm buying your house. Versus you, you still got to go through the legal trumps. I'm not, I'm not shit. buying your house. I'm just like, hey, let's go down here and let's do this. Yeah, let's take care of it. Let's pay your house off so you don't have to worry about it no more. You ain't got to worry about it no more. You just got to worry about the property tax or whatever. Let's go and pay this shit off. And then, look, look, look. That same... That same person will be set. You got a car. You got 15000 of your car. I got $100 million. Bro, here go twenty thousand. That bro. same some in certain situations, that same person will be like, "Hey, I need two hundred thousand. Like, what the fuck you mean? You need two hundred thousand, bro? Let's keep it real, bro. It's not two leeches, leeches asking for two hundred thousand like people, that, though, bro. It's the people that is like when, when Jay Z said what he said a year ago. He didn't say I'm afraid to go to family union because I'm afraid somebody will ask him a million or hundred thousand. This nigga said forty eight hundred. That's the equivalent of someone who makes a hundred thousand a year. Afraid to go to a family union because somebody might ask you for ten dollars, bro. Like really break that map. Like to us, four thousand eight hundred is a lot of money. But really break down for someone like Jay Z who's worth a billion to say I don't want to go to a family union with my cousins and stuff because somebody might ask me for eight hundred is the equivalent of one of y'all niggas saying the reason why I don't hang with my cousins for TZ is somebody might ask me for ten dollars. Another thing is gonna be the people that come out the woodwork like that. A lot of people come out. Yeah, don't fuck. Me. I'm not talking about them niggas. I'm yeah. talking about your. I'm talking about people that if you consider your close friends. Yeah. All the mother motherfuckers, like motherfuckers say, remember in high school when I gave you a pencil when you didn't have I a pencil to take this test? Nah, days. I'm not that one who said, remember when I gave you some pussy on that Friday night <laughs> and you, you, I owe you some pussy? I need yeah, bro. That was five years ago, bro. I need to the all, all them motherfuckers, no, them niggas is dead. I'm talking literally niggas that you consider your partners, your ride and die. Niggas that you know you can hit up two in the morning and they gonna pull up for you, dog. No questions asked, bro. That's who I'm talking about, C's. I don't know who you talking about because I ain't I ain't fucking with no bitch that they, 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 they got me daily pussy five years ago. And I wish a homeboy from back in the day talking about we used to be homeboys back in the day. Hey man, that was back in the day, man. We live in a today society now, man. What you talking about? Like basically don't be a leech. It's like, don't be a leech. You see this situation, don't be a leech, man. Any thoughts, Juice Man? That's a no, man. <clears throat> hey, final thoughts, C's. Yeah, um, take care of your people, man. Um, your day ones, your A ones, the people that really been in your life, been around for you, and the people that you know that are actually gonna do what they're supposed to do with the money. Um, don't be a yes man. Don't be an enabler. Don't constantly feel like you don't feel like you're obligated to people. If you if you personally feel like you should just be like no fucking say no because what are they gonna do? They're gonna hate you if you do it. They're gonna hate you if you don't do it. So either way, it's like hey, take care of your people who really rock with you. You if you pay attention, you'll know. And the people that's just leeches, just trying to feed off you vultures. 
what they say back in the day, they're saying, so you had to move, move in a room full of vultures. Um, that's it, man. Yeah, man. Uh, just shout out to um, Juice Man, you know what I'm saying, his birthday. You know what I'm saying, birthday weekend. You know what I'm saying, shout to him big the big way. You know what I'm saying, that's my only final thoughts. You know what I'm saying, we're teasing. Yeah, man. Hey, we all as individuals got to ask ourselves a very important question, especially for those in the CSRA area, area after everything that just happened. What do you need to be happy, man? Like, because if, if, if I give you 20 million and you still ain't happy, then something's wrong with you, bro. Like, because there's people out here being that's happy on 40,000 a year, man. So y'all, y'all, y'all really need to think about that, bro. What is it about you that makes you happy, bro? Because I can't put a dollar amount on you being happy, man. And the words of Airbnb and Rakim, peace. Yeah, I mean, I can catch that the next light, man. We in traffic. And I'm back quiet. <laughs>